So well, uh, I, I will talk about uh, uh, chapter 18 of uh, my book and also this article which is already in uh, archive. So the story almost started uh, some five years ago. The idea was that uh, for me was to discover new cycles. I will write it now. And uh, whatever Roberto uh, talked, it is also a difficult statement to prove. But at the end of the day, uh, the Roberto the result says that you don't find a new Hodge cycle. Uh, any Hodge cycle you find is expected to be supported in the algebraic deformation of your original algebraic cycle. And uh, okay. Uh, the whole story that I am going to tell it is valid for any hypersurface of degree d, but since I am going to do purely computational, I will restrict in myself for cubic hypersurfaces. And there is a, slowly I will tell the reason. In the case of cubic hypersurfaces, and even I am interested in just the neighborhood of the Fermat, in the neighborhood of the Fermat I can take uh, X alpha one, two, X alpha three. And at the end of the day, alpha one is alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. It is a subset of um, zero, one, two, until n plus one. So this is the, the family of uh, cubic hypersurfaces that I will take. Uh, uh, one thing that I, at the in the book I did, I took all the possible triples in 0, 1 plus n plus 1. But the point was that since I was doing a lot of computer calculations, uh, even the number of this parameter is huge, then uh, uh, I was not getting uh, the, the result that I was uh, doing. At some point in my talk, I will just restrict to a class of these t, t alphas. What? What? Which is, what is singular? No, there is no, this is a smooth uh, cubic hypersurface inside P n plus 1. Anyway, so the idea is that, uh, okay, Fermat variety has a lot of algebraic cycle. There was these linear cycles uh, uh, popping up in Roberto's talk. Uh, so you know, that's one of the reasons. But at the end, let's, uh, let's fix my notation. And then uh, it was already in Roberto Tuck. We, we take the monodromy. We take uh, uh, we have uh, delta t for any t. Even that if you start with some uh, something supporting algebraic cycle, this object will exist exist in uh, average generality. And uh, so. Uh, in the case of cubic hypersurfaces, that Griffith's basis that we were talking uh, that uh, uh, appearing in Roberto Tuck, it is uh, also uh, it is easier to describe. This will be so maybe I will fix. It will be just uh, monomials without any power, so it will be x beta two. X the, all these beta i's are just indices. Maybe first I write them. This is the same omega. FK, maybe first I write. So this will be HN around uh, XT. So let's uh, this is this will be XT, and uh, T is the collection of these T alphas. And uh, so um, this omega is some minus r1 i x i d x 0 d x i minus 1 d x i plus 1 d x n plus 1 and then uh, in order to so these are uh, uh, variables distinct variables so uh, 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 okay so uh, this i have just uh, taken beta 1 beta 2 uh, why it uh, terminates here, it will be clear because I want to make it, to take it to the projective space. Again, 0, 1, uh, n plus 1, uh, distinct. And, and then uh, 
when you a little bit uh, look at uh, Griffith's theorem, at the end you will need just this differential form with chi between the 2 n plus 1, 3, and n plus 1. So at the end of the day, this differential form will give you uh, uh, where you can take it to projective air space Pn plus 1 with pole order k, and then you can take the residue and you can uh, uh, have elements of the, uh, the algebraic theorem cohomology. So whatever uh, Dan was telling, was telling us, also Roberto was telling, at the end of the day, it is the first approximation of uh, of a uh, Hodge locus, because basically we were talking about tangent spaces. And tangent space of variety is just the first order approximation. And in order to, uh, to do higher order approximation, uh, the, well, uh, um, at some point I, real, I, I, I got the conclusion it is better to return back to the language of integral, that's why, that's why Roberto was writing the Goranishtan in the integral language, and uh, Remke was telling that Otkinovska has already written in a more uh, 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 in a homological language. But at the end, uh, well, this is uh, this is not the issue that I want to focus on. So, uh, okay. So, so the idea is that I want to I want to do higher order approximation and get uh, uh, some other result. In particular, Roberto wrote something here. There was three cases, singular, redu non-reduced, and maybe bigger. So the idea is that when it is bigger, because this will give you a new Hodge cycle that you don't have any idea how to solve the Hodge conjecture for that. And so I will, uh, focus, I will, uh, I will write uh, the, my, uh, uh, let's say, integral lang uh, language. By the way, the second approximation stuff was done by uh, students of uh, Wazam MacLean. But it's still uh, the result that I will show. It's in it three third order, fourth order, and even the fourth, fifth, ninth also is not enough. It will just produce a conjectural statement. But anyway, that's the mathematics. So, so, uh, so let's uh, start from this one. So let it is the field generated. So I will fix uh, this delta zero, but later it will be some algebraic cycle uh, by, by all these numbers. I have a finite number of differential forms, uh, let's say over Q. So one of the basic ingredients that, uh, of uh, my talk is a Taylor series, but even I will not write it here it, because you will get scared. <laughs> Even I, uh, if you ask me now, right now, explain the Taylor series, it is also takes time to me to digest whatever I have written. And, and uh, nowadays, I just use the computer elementation of uh, this Taylor series. So the idea is that these integrals, these integrals, which depends on t, they are holomorphic series in a neighborhood of a fermion. So whatever is for them holomorphic, you can write the, uh, so uh, you can ask, it, so it is, uh, theoretically it is uh, clear that this is a Taylor, you can write a Taylor series with coefficients in exactly this, this field. Okay, and uh, if you know a little bit the uh, 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 Gauss mining connection, Picard Fuchs equation, uh, you know also that it is possible to, uh, to calculate this Taylor series uh, explicitly. But something for, for me was a kind of surprise that around Fermi, it was uh, possible to give a closed formula for this, uh, for this. Even that uh, at the end of the day, I, uh, I, I don't, I use the closed formula to implement it in the computer. And uh, I will not really put the, the closed formula because uh, from the closed formula, I don't, I don't see how the, the statement that I'm going to put works theoretically. So if you want to see the, this uh, closed formula for this series this section 13.10, uh, so, 
As I said, I, I don't want to put the, this, uh, this in the blackboard because it will took a half an hour, uh, more than uh, half an hour of my time. But uh, so the moral of the story so far is that you can uh, invent such tailored services and you can implement, can implement this thing. Now, computer doesn't understand the symbol, but of course, computer understand the tailored services in, uh, in uh, T alpha. And then you will have uh, uh, tailored services, many variables, and the coefficient, and the coefficient, depending on, uh, uh, on the choice of the delta zero you take, this will be a reasonable field. For example, in, uh, in the case of uh, that you, Roberto, took, if you put this delta zero, which was a support of the linear cycle, this will be just uh, this will be just uh, Q zeta D. And remember that D in my case is, is F3. So, and at the end of the day, whatever uh, Roberto was talking about, uh, this uh, infinitesimal variation, Hodge structure, and so on, it is hidden, everything, all, all this core and Einstein ring, and so on, it is written on just these integrals the integrals of omega beta over delta zero. And these are exactly what? This is the constant term of these integrals. So this means that the theory uh, that we were dealing is just the, the constant term of this Taylor series. So the higher order approximation in the, the, uh, that now I'm going to tell about, this means that you, you don't, we, we were able to prove this difficult theorem that Roberto was telling, but just constant terms. So this means that we can go further if we, we try to use uh, the linear term, quadratic terms, degree three terms, and so on. And, uh, okay. So in order the, to say the results in the, about this higher order approximation, let's me, let me fix uh, this, uh, this, my cycles. So, so, uh, since I am the, the, in the uh, cubic case, as I said, everything is theoretically arbitrary. But the point is that uh, uh, for computation at the end, I have to. So uh, let me fix this uh, cycles x0 minus theta 6, x1 equals to 0. Oh. And then. Uh, x2m minus uh, zeta 6 x2m plus 1 equals to 0. And the rest, you put uh, some different root. 2m plus 2 plus 8 2m And all these things are inside the uh, hype uh, fermion. The zero set. Okay, in my case, this is three, three. So, uh, so this. Uh, so the, the idea is that uh, uh, we are now talking about. Uh, let's say, uh, Roberto started to use uh, A B, but I will use my own R and R check. Maybe. Anyway, okay. Uh, okay, um, and uh, so the, no, I will restrict in, in uh, this, uh, 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 to this class of, uh, of a variety, uh, this class, huh? M is, uh, if you remember, M was uh, something between M2, some number between M2 and zero, and minus one, and at the end of the day, P M2, D and to check is, is some P. This is exactly. Okay. Um,
So maybe also I also uh, again put here. So at the end of the day, there are a lot of formulas going on. So these formulas that I, I wrote here, it is for arbitrary delta zero. But uh, then after uh, our first work with, uh, uh, with Roberto, we uh, knew what is the integral of the omega betas of our arbitrary linear cycle. Took the, uh, my uh, formula with Roberto, implemented uh, here. And then uh, you will get, uh, let's say, the Taylor series of this omega beta. How look like it is, uh, it is in uh, uh, section 83. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, uh, well, at, at least for one of these. This is uh, uh, one of the reasons that at the beginning I was uh, insisting to integral language because uh, this thing, uh, uh, and not the cohomology language. So, uh, okay. So at the end of the day, I have explicit Taylor series in T alphas, which are these integrals. And so I can forget about Griffith's basis. I can a little bit play with all these uh, 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 with these Taylor series. So in Roberto's talk, it, is not, it was not clear why the Hodge locus might be uh, <coughs> reduced or non-reduced. The idea is that Hodge locus is, uh, is not just analytic variety. It is analytic scheme or analytic space. It might have nilpotent element, all the strange phenomena with the scheme can happen with, the, with this. Actually, the integral uh, at the end, uh, Roberto wrote, but let me, let me write down explicitly in this case. So Hodge locus, in this case, it will be zero set uh, of delta. So the uh, cardinality of the, the beta, 3 k minus n minus 2, k must be always. This has to do with the pieces of the Hodge filtration and so on, but at the end of the day, I want to remove all this uh, sophisticated language and to write it in a purely language which computer can understand. So at the end of the day, we have uh, this, this bunch of uh, holomorphic functions with the uh, car varying uh, and this beta varying. And we are interested uh, on this, uh, that's a little, the, right, given D, let us say D, analytic, analytic scheme given by this one. And it can be all the, <coughs> so the point that we, we actually we are considering the ideal generated by this one. So this is omega beta delta t with beta varying here, this ideal inside O t zero. And we are talking about this ideal. So it is not just the issue of its zero set, but it's also issue of the, the some uh, given by uh, the ideal. Okay. And, uh, okay, maybe I skip this uh, the katani delin kaplan uh, theorem. So, okay, so I let me reach to this point. Uh, so whatever uh, at the end Roberto said, okay, let's, so at the end of the day, uh, when M is less than this one, in our case, what is going to be? It's n2 minus 3 to 1. So it is n2 minus 3. So the idea is that even uh, when the intersection of these two linear cycles is less than m, uh, the moral of the story was that uh, you can, uh, this Hodge locus is basically, uh, uh, let, let me say uh, this v r p n2 plus R check, Pn2 check, is basically uh, uh, the expected one. Okay. 
And what this means, this means that at the end of the day, if you, uh, any deformation of this guy as a algebraic, as a Hodge cycle, which is given by integrals, at the end you have to deform both these, uh, these guys and then uh, there is nothing uh, new. And I remember that this is, uh, this is proved uh, the, by my first order. Uh, just tangent space, comparing the tangent space. And so the idea is that, uh, and, and then let's say, so in our cases, what is left? It is left n2 minus 3, n2 minus 2, n2 minus 1. So we, we assume that these two, these two cycles are. So these, uh, so Roberto put three uh, uh, possibilities. And the idea is that, uh, now try to analyze uh, which kind of uh, uh, statement we have here. So the, the last statement of Roberto was that at the end of the day, in these cases, one tangent space is strictly bigger than the other one. So you cannot say uh, uh, a priori, you don't know whether the variational Hodge conjecture is true or not. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so this one is not uh, uh, mysterious. This one I kind of, uh, is, is, is a, so if let's, let's make to in this, to in this format. So here we have uh, p in two minus one. At the end of the day, uh, it, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, easy to see that when we have two, let's say, if you want to put n equal to two in the context of another left set, when you have two p one intersecting in a point, there will be a deformation of, uh, of this guy to a uh, complete intersection of type, uh, cycle of type one, 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 and, and two. Uh, and that is the reason why the tangent space of the Hodge loci was bigger than the deformation space of each two, let's the P1. Because they both together, they can deform into something irreducible. But uh, the, so, the, so this is a kind of one can analyze further. Still, there is the issue of to, to uh, statement about uh, non-reducedness and so on. So, but the idea is not uh, to discuss non-reducedness. So the idea is that, uh, yeah, how about these cases? Um, OK. So. Uh, Even so that I, uh, so, uh, well, okay. So at the end of the day, what is Hodge locus? Hodge locus, I, I, I told you before that this is explicit Taylor series. Hodge locus is the zero sets of explicit Taylor series that even co computer understand. But uh, this one, let's say theoretical one. And, but, but the point is that uh, uh, the computer cannot handle infinite power series. And even an algebraic geometry, in order to make uh, uh, the things uh, uh, touchable, we truncate the uh, this Taylor series. So, so the basic idea is that let's uh, introduce uh, n's order Hodge locus. And n is some natural number. And so what is the n, uh, n order uh, uh, locus? Take this power series, truncate it in degree given by. So this is the zero set. Uh, set. Well, actually, it is a, we are talking this scheme theoretically, but let's just uh, of. Uh, Truncation of O omega beta. So let's uh, let's say uh, let me call this one 
F beta. And I mean, if you have analytic, uh, analytic scheme, uh, you can define it in general. So let's see. Degree in. So what this means, take the Taylor series, write it until degree n, and then you uh, cut, you throw away. So V delta zero, one is basically the tangent space of, uh, of, uh, of tangent space of, uh, of V, uh, of v the, the original one. And then uh, using tangent space, we can do further things. Okay, maybe uh, let's, uh, let me write uh, a kind of a theorem, but uh, apparently my referees are a little bit uh, in trouble with my theorems because uh, there is no proof at the end. I, <laughs> I say that, okay, it is implemented, computer has checked, <laughs> so the proof reduced to two lines in the article. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's the life. Uh, so in the case of this one, an R and R check, one and minus one, and in the case of uh, the other one, Mysterious case, R, R check, uh, R, uh, arbitrary, let's say, uh, uh, R, R check not equal to zero, and R, R check less than 10. I mean, this 10 is uh, useless because it is just because the proof is uh, done by computer, not by, well, I haven't written the code. So in these cases, so the statement is that Vn delta zero. So let us remember that the, well, let's maybe write completely R P N R check P N check. Uh, this one is smooth. Is it smooth in the scheme theoretical sense, not just. Uh, as a variety for, so in some cases, n equal to six, so just uh, in this case, eight, 10, and then n equal to nine, five, and three. So, uh, well, uh, I, I, the both of them, both of them. For these, in both cases, when I truncate the Hodge locus at order n for these n's, this uh, infinitesimal scheme will be smooth at six uh, 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 for capital N equal nine, five, three. So these are just uh, the, the capacity, the, 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 this has to do with that, uh, that by computer, uh, I cannot go further because it never ends, the calculation. But, uh, and also when I, you go to the higher dimension, it's also never, the calculation never ends. And uh, at the end of the day, I put degree cubic surfaces because I want to just to reduce the amount of computation. I could not do with dimension because I want some, uh, some uh, non-trivial hypersurface. And uh, the degree two, there is no complex non-trivial Hodge theory going on. So at the end, I have to do with degree three. So this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, the, uh, the statement. And maybe I write it. So the idea is that uh, so the conjecture is that apparently in these cases in these cases. This Hodge locus is bigger than just the intersection of the deformation space of the hypersurface together with this and this one. And uh, 
Actually, I didn't prevent the non-reduced statement, but uh, well. So maybe I put, uh, uh, OK. So uh, if, if we are able to prove that this V delta 0 is small spins, we know that its tangent space is bigger than the expected uh, 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 tangent space of the expected deformation of uh, your algebraic cycle. At the end of the day, uh, this will imply that you will get uh, 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 hot locus which is bigger. And so maybe I put uh, this, this uh, the, the picture that I made. At the end of the day, this is the, uh, let's, uh, let me even make, I make this. So, so this, uh, let's say, this is, uh, let's say, let's say the zero. So we are in the space, this T space. This is the Fermi. And, and uh, this branch that you see here, it is a deformation space of uh, uh, P and two. In this case, we know that variation of Hodge is true. This means that this Hodge locus is the same as uh, just the formation of the hypersurface together with uh, this linear subspace. Let's say this, uh, this is uh, P into check. And at the end of the day, we know that locally, uh, there are two branches of the same uh, T check that uh, uh, these are two local branches of the uh, locus of hypersurfaces, let's say, uh, of hypersurfaces with the P and with two linear uh, subspace inside. And, okay, so the idea is that if you take this combination of cycles, apparently there is another Hodge locus. Uh, crossing, uh, crossing, uh, 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 crossing this intersection, this is uh, this uh, intersection, and then which is, is strictly this is, uh, let's say, V, P, N, to check, V, P, N, to check, which is inside V delta zero. So the idea is that this is delta, uh, V delta, delta zero, it seems to be bigger. And, uh, but even, uh, uh, let's say, even if you, uh, so it is bigger, if you prove that, uh, V delta zero is smooth, but this is smoothness again in the scheme theoretic context, not really not just uh, uh, analytic variety. This will imply that uh, the, uh, this uh, V delta zero is larger than, than uh, this uh, just intersection. And at the end of the day, what this means? This means that if you take the Hodge cycle corresponding to some parameter here, you cannot verify the, uh, the Hodge conjecture just using the deformation theory of uh, these uh, linear cycles. You have to invent another new algebraic cycle. Um, of course, if you believe on the Hodge conjecture, personally, I don't believe it, <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so, so let's return back uh, so to this one. Uh, so the point is that this is, is smooth implies that Vn delta zero is, is smooth for all n. But the other way back is a little bit subtle. So the proposition, which is a kind of easy proposition, if, this is actually arbitrary analytic variety, it doesn't, if V 
delta zero is a smooth or large enough. And this is the thing that I don't know. Even if I know it, it will be, I think, useless from the computational point of view for large enough n, then the delta zero. This is a, the kind of a proposition. This means that if for large enough n you approximate your high locus, and this guy, you uh, prove that it is smooth, then you can guarantee that your delta V delta zero is smooth, and then you, can, uh, you, will, uh, you have discovered new high cycles. But the point is that uh, so far I did I a little bit of search the literature, if given an analytic uh, scheme, how much you have to approximate it to guarantee that the analytic variety itself is smooth. So, this, uh, so a priori, this, there is a number n which depends on your analytic variety. And if you approximate your analytic variety until that point, then you will be able to, uh, to claim the smoothness uh, of this one. By the way, uh, as I said, this is a smoothness in the SQM theoretical sense. So smoothness also will imply the reducedness and so on. So uh, OK. And the, but the point is that uh, I don't know. So there is a number, n attached to each uh, uh, Hodge locus that approximating the Hodge locus until that point uh, will give you the smoothness. And uh, so far by, uh, by, by computer, one, uh, you see that uh, for six folds, I can approximate until nine fold, and then I can check the smoothness until nine. When the dimension goes up, you see that the number of parameters goes up. This means that uh, the computer gets slower and slower, and when you go to the 10, then, uh, then uh, you can approximate just the third order. And for this kind of a statement, as, you, as I said, second order approximation is not enough. You need uh, uh, even higher. And right now, <laughs> in order to complete uh, the article that I, I wrote, uh, my computer is working for at least a tw degree 12 case to have the co uh, complete list. But of course, uh, uh, I hope, uh, I think at the end, uh, actually I can put two here, but two is useless, second order even. So the idea is that, uh, the, the, uh, for example, this approximation by computer for me, and also I have a trick to reduce the number of parameters. So far, for example, at the end, uh, there is a, uh, I mean, uh, it's a one week that the computer is working to check this one, and I expect two weeks more that uh, uh, to be able uh, to at least to put number three <laughs> in the table. <laughs> but uh, but uh, since uh, the first part of the theory, Roberto was able to give theoretical proof. So the idea is that, OK, let's open the way. And then at, uh, at some point, theoretical proofs uh, will come uh, automatically. OK. Uh, I have uh, more minutes. And so the, so the one big, uh, I think this one also, I, it is useful. So uh, I can also write down some non-reduced non statement, uh, which uh, kind of uh, generalizes some uh, results of Dan about some components are non-reduced. But uh, my idea is used to try to get some uh, non-trivial Hodge cycles. OK. So. When, uh, uh, even so that uh, the cut cycles that I am to uh, uh, talking about, they are in, in the level of conjectural. But uh, one idea that at the end, in, uh, during November, uh, uh, after many email uh, 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 contact with Delina, it appeared that uh, uh, actually, uh, 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 Dan called it effective Hodge property. So the effective pro Hodge property is a kind of verification of the Hodge conjecture in the first order level. So, so the idea is that let's, uh, maybe I use uh, Dan's notation, an effective verification 
of the Hajj conjecture for uh, and uh, let's say uh, in a finite in let's say in when n delta zero. So as far as I understood, at the end of the day, what was done, saying that uh, it's a kind of effective Hodge property, that we want to uh, verify the Hodge conjecture in the first order. And I was claiming at the end that this, uh, when you put the n equal to 1, then you have just a tangent space, and so on. So this one, uh, well, uh, uh, the idea, uh, well, uh, the idea apparent, I think it is, uh, 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 it is good to write down what exactly uh, by, uh, we mean by this one. At the end of the day, it is clear that we want to construct the algebraic cycle in n's order neighborhood of your Fermat variety. And, uh, but, uh, and the conversation went on. And actually, this trying to understand this situation, we were, uh, when after all these uh, 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 email contacts with Delin, we were able to understand this uh, this situation, and uh, maybe in the rest of the time uh, I will talk about this one. And uh, this means that uh, uh, we again we can conjecturally say which kind of algebraic cycles is responsible for this phenomenon. And this one also I will just make some pictures, uh, not really going to details. So this is a kind of a nice projector, really write down and uh, uh, with details and so on. So, but let's uh, let's uh, let uh, me focus on this. So the point is that, from the algebraic ge geometry point of view. This guy uh, cannot be deformed into something uh, irreducible because the intersection of uh, these, uh, the, uh, these things of, of uh, codimension bigger than, uh, uh, strictly bigger than one. But uh, after playing a lot uh, email back and forth, it turned out in primitive homology homology or homology, it turned out that maybe, OK. Uh, uh -huh. it, it turned out that in primitive homology, if you just look at the cohomology class, maybe and now I write a, uh, uh, so, uh, another. This will be equivalent. This will be the same, so up to the polarization and so on, into some of linear, some of uh, three linear cycles. I make the picture. And actually, the, for the first time, I see that, OK, let's let this, you're focusing on just two linear cycles. It's a kind of, because I don't see where, I just, I'm in a darkness, because that's why I'm taking two linear cycles. And then I really appear three the linear cycles. So. So the idea is that this in primitive cohomology will be uh, equivalent to three sum of Tillier three linear cycles. Actually, what I'm saying that, so this is the point. This, uh, remember that this is uh, one minus one. And even the coefficients are not, uh, uh, so this is, I'm talking about this one. So this, the homolo cohomology class of this one will be equivalent to uh, some uh, three linear cycles. How they intersect each other? This is codimension, uh, let's say. Let, I, I just write the codimension. This is uh, codimension uh, n2 minus 1. This one also n2 minus 1. And this point that you see here, it is n2 minus 3. So there are. Uh, if you want to do in n equal to n, n equal to two case, I think uh, Dan will like better. It is just three lines. <laughs> uh, 
uh, intersecting uh, in. Uh, uh, okay, we have, we have a we have a tree. So, and the point is that Hodge locus just capture the primitive part of the uh, uh, of the algebraic circle. This means that at the end, if this guy in the primitive uh, cohomology is the same as this one, they have the same Hodge locus. And the point is that the, the, this, this can be deformed. It is the like similar, they want to, uh, so the point is that uh, this, let's say, One, two, three can be deformed into, let's say, uh, so the idea I started again to try to understand this equation in the case of lines. So it is uh, ruled uh, surface. So maybe I have to say that this is in the, this is. Uh, uh, Okay, ruled algebraic, ruled algebraic cycle. In some uh, uh, books also, a scroll, cubic scroll. So it is very explicit uh, uh, algebraic cycles. Of course, you do in lower dimension, but what I'm saying here, they are just the uh, natural generalizations of uh, 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 so the, the name is that, let's say, so the, the name, official names are this one, and the ruled, uh, ruled the surface, let's say. But you have to a little bit uh, modify the, this algebraic cycle to go to a higher dimension. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, so the mystery in this case also was a kind of salt because it was not proved because uh, you have candidate at it. In the same thing as in the case of uh, Dan's uh, theorem and also in uh, Roberto's, you have candidate, but to prove it, it will be a headache. You have to go a lot of uh, competition and so on. But at least you are sure, kind of sure, that you have, you, you have not discovered any new heart cycles. You have just produced another PhD thesis <laughs> for, for another student. But uh, and of, I think in this case also, it might be very difficult. I mean. Uh, case by case, for example, from complete intersection to Roberto's case, the, the, the degree of uh, difficulty increased. And if you want to really prove that a space of hypersurfaces containing a cubic scroll is a component of the Hodge locus, it, will, uh, it, will, it can take uh, uh, some good amount of effort. But, uh, but uh, everything, uh, let's say, conjecturally uh, at least uh, solved. So, uh, so what I'm saying, there is no rigorous statement here. There is just expectation. And at the end of the day, many emails, this case even remain mysterious. In this case, even uh, we don't know what's going on. And the good point is that here we have an arbitrary R and R check. What is the moral of the story? By comparing the tangent to space, this means that you have a pencil, a kind of pencils of the components of the Hodge locus because R actually this, this is parameterized by R, R check. And this phenomenon, at least in the case of Noder Lefschetz locus, has to do with Harris conjecture when we have infinite number of uh, components of the Hodge locus. If you define the special component, the general component, these components will be special. So at the end, we, we have landed on a kind of uh, of uh, contrary example uh, to a generalization of uh, Harris conjecture for, for uh, uh, cubic trifold. But, uh, but, uh, but maybe it's something uh, mysterious for me at the end of the day, uh, uh, I, I think that in the next years I will think about uh, how much you have to approximate Hodge locus that you are, you to, to guarantee that such Hodge locus exists. And, um, but apparently these are, I can sell this kind of a statement as theorem, but even the proofs are computer assisted and uh, at the end uh, the people apparently they don't like. But uh, at the end, uh, so at some point one has to arrange uh, for uh, rigorous proof. 
but uh, I'm not sure that really always you will find a rigorous proof. And uh, it was good that uh, Roberto found a theoretical proof with, uh, for what we did uh, computationally. But even that proof, uh, the, 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 since the degree of difficulty has increased, this means that if you want to try to do all the things here, then a more complicated proof, more complicated proof, and then uh, it is not clear uh, what to do next. Okay, I will finish here. So thank you for everybody participating. <laughs>